if you say, ah, well, the, you know, the probability of five royal flushes in a row is the same as any other set of five hands, you're assuming that I'm dealing fairly. But that's exactly what we want to know, right? The problem with that answer is it doesn't take into account any of the alternative hypotheses, like the hypothesis that I'm cheating, which in that example is clearly right. So let's apply this general principle to the fine-tuning of the universe. Your, your reply was that the laws of nature in our universe are as improbable as in any others. Now that's true only if it, they were chosen at random. But that's precisely what we want to know about the laws of, of, na of nature, right? The question is not, suppose we just choose laws at random, what's the probability that they support life? The question is, we, against all those odds, ridiculous odds, live in a universe that supports life, what's the probability that its laws were chosen at random? Yeah? So the extremely poor, small probability of a life-permitting universe being chosen by chance, coupled with some plausible alternative hypotheses, multiverse, whatever, so the probability that our universe's laws were chosen at random is quite small. Now, in, in one of your comments, you, issue, you accuse me of uh, an argument from an analogy. You're saying that I'm saying that life is analogous to a win, and that that's my argument. And it's pretty obvious that that's not my argument. My argument is a, ba a pretty straightforward Bayesian inference. Um, if you want to get technical on these things, suppose we've got some data, D, uh, we've got some chance hypothesis C, we've got some alternative hypothesis, um, which is A, which is not C. Um, if the probability of the data given the alternative is a lot greater than the probability of the data given the chance hypothesis, in other words, uh, if the alternative hypothesis explains the data a lot better than the chance hypothesis, then the probability that the alternative hypothesis is true given the data is, is greater than the probability that the chance hypothesis is true given the data unless the alternative hypothesis is a priori uh, very unlikely. Uh, this is just straightforward maths. You can do that proof in a few lines. Uh, I'd be happy to do it if you want to see it. Um, so with this general principle, just from the mathematics of probability, I applied it uh, as an example to the loaded die or to the poker game and then I uh, just to you know refresh our memories because it's a common sense you know, principle um, I then applied that same principle to the fine-tuning of the universe for life so there's no analogy and in particular there's no assuming that life is special that's an important point I'm not assuming that life is special I'm just saying that there are alternative hypotheses with it which explain it better and that's all I need. Um, now, this is where things actually get interesting because you say um, that the vastness of the universe provides a better explanation. Now, do you see what just happened? You were faced with you know, overwhelming odds against the chance hypothesis and you went looking for another hypothesis, in this case, the vast universe. You've done exactly what I just said. You tried to multiply your probabilistic resources, as, as they say. You know, the idea is, I guess, if you throw enough darts, you're bound to hit the bullseye exactly. The problem is the vastness of the universe on its own won't explain the, the fine-tuning. Um, incidentally, I have another uh, YouTube video on the vastness of the universe if you're uh, interested. Shameless self-promotion. Um, if the, the laws of nature, the constants of nature, say the strength of gravity, if it's fine-tuned in our little part of the universe, and the same laws of, gra of nature apply everywhere, then you've just got one big fine-tuned universe. The universe as a whole is still fine-tuned. So that doesn't help. Um, if, if you want an illustration of this, suppose we both enter a lottery and I win. And you say, oh, you're a lucky sod. And I say, no, I bought a million tickets. You say, well, that's clever. I said, yeah, no, and I put my lucky numbers on every single one of them. Well, I'm an idiot, right? A million tickets all with the same numbers hasn't, hasn't got a million times better chance. It's the same chance as one. A million copies of the same thing won't help us here. We need... Uh, buying a million tickets in a lottery only helps you win if they're all different. So more of the same universe out there doesn't help us. We need them to be different. Now, you're thinking, 
suppose the laws of nature aren't the same everywhere. Suppose that out in these other parts of the universe, the laws are different. And they're enough different, there's enough variation that the right combination's got to end up somewhere out there. So life could only appear in those regions where the laws of nature are just right. Now, wouldn't that explain the fine tuning? The answer is yes, and that's a multiverse, which is what I've been arguing for all along as a possibility, a good possibility, a reasonable possibility. So I think, um, after all that, I think we've almost kind of arrived at the same place, bizarrely. Well, uh, I've been enjoying these comments and videos, um, and I uh, hope you reply soon.